you know, do you think that the maybe the football world still has a long way to go to understand that kind of as you call it the empathetic leader because guys like Gareth Southgate and you see the criticism he gets you see the criticism that Graham Potter got when he was there was a time he was struggling at Brighton Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was the same at Manchester United because they're not very imposing figures on the touchline they don't scream they don't shout people almost look at them as lesser leaders they want someone who's on this touchline screaming and shouting and that's not necessarily what players need anymore do you think that the football world still has, especially fans, because they don't see behind the scenes, of the, you know, how managers operate, that they still have a long way to go to kind of have a better understanding of the way managers have now evolved? They're not managers as such, a lot of them are kind of head coaches, I suppose. Brilliant question, Adam. Yeah, absolutely fascinating story. They surround. The disappointing thing for me when I was the head coach of Bristol City was in the middle of COVID, not one of my games as a manager was in front of any supporters. So, you know, the first thing I would do, given another opportunity as a manager, head coach, would be get the supporters into the training ground. I saw Vincent Company do something uh, in pre-season on YouTube with Burnley. It's, anyone listening will have a look. It's fascinating. And the guys turn up watching training. It's not only that. They get an insight into what goes on behind the scenes. And they get, because they've had an insight, they get much more of an understanding. And you're almost educating the supporters as to the way that, that, you, that you work. And you're right, because I always remember, that you'll remember, Martin O'Neill. Uh, now, it's, now it's Conte. Uh, Mourinho, top, top managers, but you're right, the game has changed. And, and being honest, as a player on the pitch, how much information you can hear, particularly at that level in them stadiums, how much you can actually take in from a manager's screen is not, not as much as, as you would like to see, as, a, as you like to think as a supporter. I think it'll only take a Guardiola or a Jurgen Klopp or one of these top guys to go and sit up in a stand, um, a little bit like Eddie Jones, uh, I know Steve McLaren and Nigel Pearson used to do it, but it'll only take one of them to go up and because there's absolutely no doubt about it. You can see so much more from up there. It's a lot calmer. You're away from the fourth official. You're away from all the nonsense at the side of the pitch. And you can get so much more of a more of a yeah. tactical understanding of the game. But the supporters want to see this guy on the side of the pitch who's driving his or her team on and being, the, as you say, the dominant macho, I'm the manager, I'm going to lead from the front. So I think it will only take something like that for it to change. You have to do what you think is you have to do what you think is right, and you know again, I'm, you're seeing things coming out around uh, Enrique at, at Spain, the way that he's he's coaching his players, and, and the way that you he's getting an understanding of the players and what it is that makes them tick, and it, they're all different. Remember, so certain players you need to understand quickly, and this is when you get to know the person before the player. That guy might need telling what to do. He might be the type of of, of learner. He needs he needs clear information concise, here's what we're doing. The other guy might need a, a question and an answer and he might need to find his own little way. You're guiding him as a coach, of course you are. You're not manipulating, but you're guiding him. So it's understanding each individual within within a team unit. And again, I went to see Stuart Lancaster out in Leinster, who the ex-England rugby coach, mm -hmm. who, just because I'd seen something on on uh, in lockdown on YouTube about him and he's an ex-teacher. And because he's an ex-teacher, he's a master. And I love watching... And it doesn't matter if they're a, it doesn't matter if they were a musician or a or a bin man. Like if you're a master at something and you're watching them in action, it's fascinating, isn't it? Yeah. And I went to see Stuart for a couple of days and just again to watch him in his own environment, the way that he took team meetings, um, the way that he delivered things was it was different to the football world that, that I know. And it's not I'm not sat here trying to reinvent the wheel. Who am I to, to say that? I just think to to, to answer your question, a long winded answer, I think. It has got a long way to go. I think you've only got to watch some of these all or nothing um, documentaries, but not the English football ones, which are brilliant, by the way. Oh, but by the way, the biggest leader of all of them is Arteta, isn't he? I'm so glad he's still doing well now because he gets a bit of stick for his light bulbs and his drawing. <laughs> <laughs> and they're, they're playing the um the, the the song to get them prepared for uh, going to Anfield as well. It was a bit yeah, but he gets the cameraman in, doesn't he, to do the team <laughs> talk. You can see what it means to that guy. He's got, he's got the players in the palm of his hand and you can see the way that the staff, staff speak about him, what a fantastic person. And you've always got to have that bit of steel. And people say to me, when you became the, the, the head coach, having, having been Lee Johnson's assistant for four years, what changed? And overnight, I had to, I couldn't walk in the door the next day as the manager as a different person because not only had I been the assistant for four years, I'd played with some of the guys previously in my career and they'd be thinking, who's this fraud? Who's this mm -hmm. guy that now he's got the title of a manager? So you have to be true to yourself, I think. Even as far as people calling you gaffer and stuff like that, it's so outdated. Really. 